aside from Oberyn, who is my personal favorite character in Game of Thrones, everything about Dorne is universally disliked by fans. The scenes here were rough to sit through, but there are so many reasons to make a dedicated map video for this kingdom. A Feast for Crows was a bit of a slow read, but the chapters in Dorne really made the fourth book stand out for me. After House Martell conquered all of Dorne for the first time, they made their home and capital, Sunspear. While this family is commonly referred to as Martell, the actual name is House Nymeros Martell. When a race of people from Essos called the Roinar were escaping the Valyrians and their dragons a thousand years before the start of the story, their long escape led by Princess Nymeria with her 10,000 ships ended in Dorne. Nymeria came from a place with very large bodies of water, which is drastically different from where she landed. The shores of a hot and dry desert. The Martells were not a powerful house in comparison to the kings in Dorne during this time. They were just lords under them, but after giving the Roinar a new home, they got a huge boost in power from their female warriors. Nymeria burnt all 10,000 of her ships to signify they found a new home and will run no longer. She married Mors Martell and together conquered all of Dorne for the first time. At the time, the Martells' home was a place called Sandship, a small and ugly stronghold where they built Sunspear around. Three winding walls protect Sunspear, the two new tall towers that were built were the Spear Tower and the Tower of the Sun. Prisoners of noble birth are held in the Spear Tower, while the Prince of Dorne lives in the Tower of the Sun. The capital is located right on the broken arm of Dorne. Supposedly, there used to be a natural land bridge that connected Westeros and Essos long ago. The first men used it to migrate from Essos to Westeros, where the giants and children of the forest lived. Battles broke out for their land, so the children resorted to destroying the arm of Dorne with magic to stop any more people coming from Essos. It didn't stop them for long, however, since another race called the Andals came by ships and invaded Westeros. House Martell were one of the families that descend from these Andal adventurers and made Dorne their new home. The children of the forest used to call this region the Empty Land. After Nymeria married Mors Martell, Roynish customs were integrated into Dorne. Instead of being kings and queens, House Nymeros Martell would call their rulers prince and princesses like how the Roynar did. Men were no longer the only ones capable of ruling. All that matters is which child was born first. Some of the Roynar did not want to integrate into Dornish customs and decided to live on rafts in the Greenblood. Greenblood is the main river in Dorne that gets its name from its green water. The Roynar who live here call themselves the orphans of the Greenblood and refer to their old river home in Essos as their mother. The rafts that they live on is apparently made from the 10,000 ships Nymeria burnt after making Dorne their new home. The orphans do trade with merchants from all over at a place called Planky Town. This trading town is at the mouth of the Greenblood. Right by one of the walls of Sunspear is Shadow City. It's the closest thing to a city in Dorne, but still not a very impressive place. The many narrow alleys have turned the city into a kind of labyrinth. Not far from Sunspear in the Shadow City, on a beach is the Water Gardens. It's the Martell's personal vacation spot. One of the many things that distinguish Dorne from the other kingdoms of Westeros is that the Targaryens were never truly able to conquer Dorne. The Dornish were even able to kill a dragon and Aegon's sister wife during their conquest. It was only through marriage between the Martells and Targaryens that brought Dorne into the Seven Kingdoms. As a gift to his new wife, the Prince of Dorne had the water gardens built for Daenerys Targaryen, and not the one we all know now, but another Daenerys long before her. Since Dorne is the hottest kingdom, the water gardens would make Daenerys' new home more tolerable. The children they had and others of noble birth would play here. Daenerys invited all lowborn kids on a hot day, and it's become a tradition ever since. This is where the current Prince of Dorne in the books, Duran Martell, lives isn't in the best shape and sits here while he thinks. Where that dragon and Targaryen queen were killed was a place called Hellholt. Around 300 years before the story begins, after all the other kingdoms were already conquered, Rhaenys atop her dragon Meraxes returned to Dorne after their first field attempt. The first time she came, all of Dorne decided not to fight and instead hid in the mountains and deserts. The people left and all the homes were only women and children. Rhaenys decided to leave when the princess of Dorne told her she was not welcome here. When Rhaenys returned years later, a bolt from a scorpion hit Meraxes through the eye and fell on the castle. It's not clear what happened to Rhaenys after the fall, but she was presumed dead. A scorpion is the giant crossbow mechanism that we saw Bronn using against Daenerys and Drogon in Season 7. Rhaenys' body was never found which led some to believe she survived and was tortured at Hellholt. These theories grew when Aegon the Conqueror agreed to peace after reading a letter sent to him from Dorne. Hellholt is the home of House Uller, located in the middle of a desert. Within Dorne, this family has a reputation of being wild and unpredictable, saying half of the others are half mad and the other half are even worse. The keep Hellhold got its name after the family's rivals were invited into the castle but were locked inside and burned to death. The castle was built along the Brimstone River which has sulfurous waters. Alaria San, Oberyn's lover, is a bastard from this family. Both the Martells and others descend from Andals. 
with the other Andal houses in Dorne being House Illyrion of God's Grace, House Corgyle of Sandstone, House Vaith of the Red Dunes, and House Jordane of the Tor. Not much to say about these four houses, but I think it's still interesting to know their locations. Thousands of years before the Andal invasion, the first men houses who made Dorne their home are still powerful houses to this day. The ones that survived all the wars and the Andals are House Dane, who were the kings of the Torrentine, House Fowler, who were the kings of Stone and Sky, and the most powerful of the three was House Ironwood, who called themselves the High Kings of Dorne. The Ironwood's home, also called Ironwood, defends passage into Dorne called the Boneway or Stoneway. They even have the title of Warden of the Stoneway, something important since the Boneway is only one of two entries into Dorne. It's the natural passageway through the Red Mountains that connects Dorne to the Stormlands. The other passage through the Red Mountains is the Prince's Pass. The family that guards it is House Fowler of Skyreach, who have the title of Warden of Prince's Pass. Skyreach is the Fowler's home and it's carved into the mountain overlooking the pass. Just like the Boneway, the Prince's Pass has an official name and it's the Wide Way. It became known as the Prince's Pass after the Martells came in power. It separates Dorne from the Reach. Dorne, the Stormlands and the Reach have warred for a very long time for an area called the Dorne's Marches, which is currently owned by the Stormlands which is a little strange since it's called the Dorne's Marches. One house who has fought many battles for the Marches is House Will of the Boneway. In their castle, also called Will, the family has dug under their home to link between caverns to better defend the Red Mountains. A while back, a Targaryen prince named Aemon the Dragon Knight was captured in Dorne and held prisoner by a Will Lord. One of the most loved Targaryen kings, Baylor the Blessed, walked through the Dornish desert on foot and was given a key to free his cousin. To Baylor's surprise, the Wills placed Aemon's cage over a pit of vipers. In order to save his cousin, he walked into the pit while being bit over and over until he passed out in front of Aemon. Aemon was able to free himself and carry the unconscious Baylor to safety. There is also a river named after this house and nearby is the ruins of Vulture's Roost within the Red Mountains. In the past, there have been rebels who referred to themselves as Vulture Kings, who were against the Iron Throne. I'm not sure if any of the Vulture Kings made their home in Vulture's Roost, but rebels would be in the same area of the Red Mountains as Vulture's Roost. The last prominent family from First Men descent is House Dane of Starfall. To me, easily the most interesting part of Dorne. Like I said earlier, they style themselves as the Kings of Torrentine, and it's because of their home on an island within the Torrentine River. Their castle, Starfall, was built where the founder tracked down a falling star and found a magical stone. The stone was used to forge the Great Sword of Dawn. It's belonged to the Danes for 10,000 years. A lot of houses have ancestral Valyrian steel swords which are as powerful as Dawn, but the Danes don't pass down the sword from father to son like other houses do. Only those deemed worthy can wield the sword. They are then given the famous title of Sword of the Morning. The last Sword of the Morning was Sir Arthur Dane of the Kingsguard. He was Rhaegar Targaryen's close friend who died fighting at the Tower of Joy. The Tower of Joy was just your regular round tower in the Prince's Pass within the Red Mountains. It was actually named by Rhaegar Targaryen where he and supposedly Lyanna Stark were staying during Robert's Rebellion. This has all been confirmed in Game of Thrones, but there is still a lot of mystery surrounding what happened here in the books. When Ned Stark and his companions went looking for his sister after the war, they found three members of the Kingsguard waiting outside. The only survivors were Ned Stark and Howland Reed. Lyanna was found in a bed of blood where she soon died. Ned returned Dawn back to Starfall after the battle where Arthur fell. He also had the tower torn down to build memorials for the fallen fighters. After handing off Dawn to Arthur's sister Ashara, shortly after she jumped from one of the towers of Starfall. Her body, however, was never found. Ned once loved Ashara, so there's a ton of theories of why she did what she did and whether or not she's still alive. The Danes share physical traits with the Targaryens, but George Martin has confirmed they are not of Valyrian descent. Some have the silver hair and purple eyes we see from Dragonlords, which is unique in Westeros. A little further north along the Torrentine is a Dane branch family called House Dane of High Hermitage. They are landed knights and not lords. One family member in the current story who I enjoyed reading the small parts he was in is Gerald Dane, better known as Darkstar. He doesn't have a very good reputation being called cruel and jealous of his late cousin Arthur. He was psycho enough to cut off Marcella's ear, who was just a little girl in an attempt to kill her. Duran Martell tells the Kingsguard who was in Dorne that Gerald Dane is staying in High Hermitage. Darkstar is from the Dane branch family that live here, but it wouldn't make much sense for him to be hiding in the most obvious place after trying to kill Cersei's daughter, Marcella. And that's the map of Dorne. Dorne was the last video planned for this series. I asked in the last video if you guys have any requests and few came in, so I want to ask that again. I've been leaning towards doing one on the Iron Islands, but I didn't see anyone asking for it. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.